The NCESD Early Support for Infants and Toddlers program has a team of professionals ready to support families who have concerns with their child's development. They provide resources, information, and individualized home-based support to families in Chelan, Douglas, and Grant counties. Please reach out. Babies can't wait. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. We're back at a happy Monday, fifth day of June, 2023. I'm Dan Koontz. This is Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Hope you had a good weekend. Friendly reminder, during this live program, we ask you to please mute your cell phone. Uh, gorgeous weekend. 85 Saturday, 85 Sunday. Going to be a little bit warmer today. Into the 90s tomorrow. Uh, upper 90s on Thursday. And then a cool down. Pretty significant cool down. As a matter of fact, by the time we get to the weekend, very low relative humidity. It's going to be in the single digits and also a little breezy. Forecast details are coming up, but again, it's going to feel more like summer than spring, even though it is still officially spring. Plus, we'll get to the news that made the news over the weekend. We'll have that for you as well. In sports, boy, the Mariners are hurting. Not playing particularly good baseball. Got swept by Texas. Before that, they lost two of three to the Yankees. It's not that they're losing baseball games or getting blown out. That was the case over the weekend against the Rangers. Highlights, if you will. But on the other side of the coin, the Wenatchee Apple Sox are off to a 3-0 and start. And they're all league victories. We like that. They are off today. And then they have their home opener tomorrow. We will have that on television here on the NCW Life Channel. And speaking of that, I hope you had a chance to enjoy the commencement exercises of Eastmont High School that we televised live on Friday night. We'll be right back at it again this Friday night. We'll be able to off the field of the Apple Bowl for the Wenatchee High School commencement exercises. We'll have that for you live at 8 o'clock on Friday night. It is 61 degrees. Let's do it. We got some gorgeous views today. It's not even cloud in the sky. It was really hard to stay inside over the weekend. If you had to stay inside, I feel sorry for you. It was about as nice as you can imagine. As you can see, it's just a beautiful, beautiful morning. These long days, 15 hours and 47 minutes of daylight now. With sunrise at 5.06 and sunset at 8.53. I'm going to bed now, of course, when it's still light out. It's not too hard. You just get used to it after a while. We never quite get to the 16 hour of daylight mark. That just doesn't happen. We get all the way to 15 hours and 59 minutes of daylight here on our longitude and latitude. Up near the Canadian border, they get a little over 16 hours, but not here. But the days are long. Good morning to the valley. From our Wenatchee Heights camera, speaking of a gorgeous view, jump off ridge jumps into the picture, pardon the pun, a little bit of snow way off in the distance in the Cascades. Uh, Eric Granstrom, our good buddy Eric Granstrom, uh, helped uh, put together the broadcast on a Friday night at the Town Toyota Center. He parked at Walla Walla Point Park and walked up from there and he said the mosquitoes were everywhere at Walla Walla Point Park. Of course, the Columbia River is running high, there's lots of standing water, that's all, that's all the mosquitoes need to get a toehold. So just a heads up there, and good morning to the Stimmel Basin. I bet you Lake Chelan looks good. Another busy day up at the lake. Hello, Lake Chelan. Looking good, nice and blue, bathtubs full. That's from the Bear Mountain camera as we look up towards the Holden Village and on up to Stahican. And speaking of Lake Chelan, yet another view from the very tip top of McNeil Canyon, one of our favorite uh, spots to do. The Chelan Butte is on your left, a uh, good swath of the lake. Can't quite see Chelan, it's hidden, as you might imagine, from the very top of McNeil Canyon. Some gorgeous views on what's going to be a beautiful week weather-wise, but it is going to be quite warm. We're talking about 10 to 14 degrees above average. Again, Saturday's high was 85, Sunday's high was 85. What are we looking at today? About 87 
or 88, maybe even 89. A little windy today. As I mentioned before, the relative humidity is going to be bone dry. It's going to be in the single digits. Now, that's not unheard of, but this time of the year is unheard of. It's also going to be a little breezy today. North winds are going to funnel down the Okanagan Valley. And so we're going to see some wind. It's going to die down late in the afternoon, and it's going to pick up in intensity overnight and through the day on Tuesday. So just a little breeze at times today. 57 for the overnight low. Into the 90s we go right around 90, 91 on Tuesday. 61 for the overnight low. That's where we're at right now. And then into the, well into the 90s. Mid 90s Wednesday. We top off with the hot weather on Thursday with a high of 97 degrees. And then the high pressure ridge. There's two of them that are doing battle. One of them is going to win. And that's going to allow us to cool down to much more temperate temperatures with a high of only 80 on Friday, but there is a 40% chance of showers on Friday. Could even see a thunderstorm. It's a possibility, but look how much cooler it's going to be. Only 80 Friday night for commencement exercises, a 30% chance of showers. We'll see. I hope not. With an overnight low of 61, and into the next weekend we go considerably cooler. Not quite as nice as last weekend, but no bad, no problems. Partly cloudy in 81 on Saturday. Got back to the sunshine in 86 on Sunday. But boy, what a beautiful weekend. A gorgeous stretch of weather. I'm liking this. Five minutes after the hour. After two minutes, we'll have the news that you need to get your Monday going. Information in two minutes. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. I had had a seizure in the middle of the night and they rushed me to the hospital and decided um, to induce labor to try to get the baby out. The outpouring of love and support I got from Confluence Health. My coworkers coming to the ICU to be with me. For me, it's the work family. It's just incredible to have support no matter what I'm going through in my personal life, my, my own health. It's Click It RV's lowest price guarantee sale going on now at your neighborhood Click It RV. Be a winner like me and get the Click It RV. With zero down and no payments till September, now is the time to own your dream RV. Get the Click It RV now. Are you going to be mad, bro? Get never before deep, deep discounts on trailers, fifth wheels, toy haulers, and motorhomes. Plus the best selection, highest trading value as ever, and a lifetime warranty. Nobody beats the discounts at Click It RV. I'm Richard Sherman, and we guarantee it. On Frontage Road. It's the NCW Life Community Calendar, a presentation of Mary Maids. The 2023 Wenatchee Pride Festival returns on Saturday, June 3rd from 11 to 9 at Memorial Park. The festival features live music, numerous speakers, drag, and dancing from the stage, plus 12 different food vendors, a beer garden, a youth area with activities until 3, and 42 tables from area businesses, churches, and student clubs. Come together as a community and join the fun as one. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, located on South Wenatchee Ave, has the largest selection of spas and swim spas in town. Stay cool this summer in an artesian swim spa and use it all year long. We enjoy helping families reconnect one spa at a time. Hot tubs are proven to improve sleep and decrease arthritis pain. Our passion is water, so please bring us a water sample and we will help you diagnose your pool or spa water for free. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, your pool and spa experts. Seven minutes after the hour, 61 degrees, uh, a little on the warm side, upper 80s today, quite windy at times. We'll be warmer than that into the 90s on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 97, and then a big cool down comes our way on Friday. We begin with this story, uh, a new wildland fire is being called the 141 fire, got its start on Saturday evening. This was just north of Arondo. The fire toned out at about 615 Saturday night, one mile north of the town of Arondo near Highway 2, mile post 141, thus the name. Moving uphill quickly in steep slopes near the mouth of Pine Canyon. Arondo Fire Chief Jim Oatley says crews from multiple agencies fought to contain the blaze through Saturday night into Sunday morning, kept keeping its growth to about 70 acres. The fire burned land in both the Arondo and Waterville Fire Districts as it moved up the hill. Agencies involved in the response, including the Arondo and Waterville Fire Departments, as well as State Department of Natural Resources, Federal Bureau of Land Management teams, and the U.S. Forest Service, only says 74 personnel involved in that firefighting effort. A man who uh, 
carried on inappropriate phone calls and video calls with a 12-year-old child while in jail, was sentenced Thursday to seven and a half years in prison. 37-year-old Kenneth Allen Crabtree was in Okanagan County Jail in 2021 on trespassing and court order violations when he conducted the calls, which were recorded by jail staff. He pled guilty in Douglas County Court in April to one charge of sexual exploitation, one charge of communicating with a minor for immoral purposes, and four counts of violating a protective order that barred him from contacting the child. And once he's released, Crabtree must register as a sex offender. An East Wenatchee woman, 42-year-old Raquel Ann Langhurst, she faces trial next month on five felony and five gross misdemeanor charges for allegedly facilitating those calls. Link Transit has chosen a brand new leader, a new CEO, and they chose this person from within their ranks. His name is Nick Covey. Right now, he's the Public Transit Agency's Chief of Staff. He becomes the new head dude, effective July 1st. Covey has been with Link for 29 years, including a long stint as his finance director. He's also served on the Columbia Valley Community Health Board of Directors, including three years as president. The agency's board of directors chose Covey to replace Richard DeRock, who's retiring from the post after more than 20 years. As the director, Link Transit Course has been serving bus riders in the Wenatchee Valley for over 30 years. A mid-morning collision Friday at a busy intersection in Wenatchee tied up traffic big time. It also ended up, a uh, vehicle ended up on its side. Wenatchee police say just after 9 a.m. Friday morning, the driver of a Ford van ran the red light at Mission Street. The van was heading east on ferry. That van was then T-boned by an oncoming Subaru Legacy, which had, the, which had the northbound green light, rolled onto its side in the southeast corner of that intersection. Police Captain Brian Chance said there were no major injuries, although one person was taken to Central Washington Hospital for a precautionary assessment. The driver of the van will be cited for their part in that accident. Speaking of uh, traveling, travelers on Sunset Highway outside Kashmir is going to see some significant detours. And that starts today. A major road improvement project kicks into high gear. The Chelan County Public Works Department says major improvements around the Sunset intersection with Goodwin Road will mean that the route will be closed for up to 30 days with a detour via Mill Road. The overall project involves widening the roads, adding sidewalks, illumination and landscaping and creating a uniform corridor from Sunset to Goodwin to the Hay Canyon Roundabout on the north side of Highway 2. Contractor KRCI of East Wenatchee estimates the total cost at just under $2.8 million. And you can now take a ride on Washington State's first Alpine coaster. The Leavenworth Adventure Park officially opened Thursday and riders rejoiced at the chance to hop on and choose exactly how they like to enjoy the ride. The park features other attractions like a lion resembling climbing wall with multiple levels of difficulty. There's a bungee bounce trampoline and all kinds of cool stuff. We had a chance to catch up with General Manager John Sutherland about what the park brings to Leavenworth. There's any type of mountain recreation you want to do in Leavenworth um, and there's lots of places to eat and lots of places to drink and lots of places to shop as you know. Um, but you know if you're not coming to necessarily go hiking or do stuff like that, there's not tons for kids to do and families. So really we kind of see it as the place that families can come and have some entertainment and actually see a great view. and and things like that. We wanted things to be interactive, of course, and so we have this amazing, you know, sculpted climbing wall, um, the bungee trampoline, all of which I've just seen around, and I was just trying to think of things that would appeal to as many ages as possible. Um, you know, so, um, and then we have that mining sluice, which really kind of was intended for small kids, but everybody seems to, to love it because you, you find all these great rocks and gemstones and things like that. So it, it was kind of created to, to kind of get as much of the family or the groups as possible. Like the climbing wall goes from super easy to like r really difficult. The Alpine coaster was manufactured in Germany and um, they're all over Bavaria. So I could say that this actually makes it more Bavarian <laughs> than it was before. Um, and so this is a very traditional, I mean, it's thing to do to have these kind of small parks all over Bavaria and in Germany. So um, not everybody will like it, um, but I think it fits with 
what the town actually is, which is a tourist town um, and a Bavarian themed town. So similar to a regular roller coaster with a couple of significant differences. One, it's a, just a single or two person sled um, and uh, you control your own experience. So while it takes you up the hill like a roller coaster, you actually get to control your own speed on the way down. So that's a huge difference. So you can make it a, like a really thrilling ride or you can kind of create a nice beautiful scenic ride because the scenery is kind of so amazing around it. So I also produce theater and when I produce theater one of the most the biggest pleasures to me is like watching the audience watch your show <laughs> if they're enjoying it and then here it's watching people have fun on something you created it's just kind of a trip really you know I just I, I love it so that's that's the best part that's what's making news on this Monday morning we'll be right back at it again with another newscast to fill you in what happened over the weekend at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. 5, 6, and 10 with Grant and Eric. And if those times don't work out for you for watching it on television, you can watch it on the World Wide Web at your convenience. We'll have the news up and posted right around 5 o'clock on our Facebook page, on our website, and on our YouTube page. If there's a news tip out there, if there's something out there that you think warrants our attention, get a hold of us. Look at the bottom of your screen, and that's how you do it. You can email us, you can call us, or you can go to our website or Facebook page and Drop us a line. When we come back, Apple Sox, good. Mariners, not so much. Sports is two minutes away. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. So we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Shoot, I think I left my keys in the kitchen. Can you grab them? Yep. Find them? What's this? It's a locking bag. It keeps Grandma's medication safe. But I could just take it. Well, for one thing, it locks. And if it were gone, I'd know there's a problem. Huh. Well played. Help prevent opioid misuse before it starts. Visit GetTheFactsRx.com. In 1963, Coastal opened its doors. 60 years later, we have you to thank for our continued success, and we're still proud to be just what your country needs. Today, you'll find everything from pants and boots to fencing, feed, and more, with service from friendly, knowledgeable employees who live the country lifestyle, like you. Join the celebration. Stop by, scan the QR code, or enter online to win big prizes. Visit Coastal today, or find us online at coastalcountry.com. minutes after the hour not a good weekend for the Mariners swept by the division leading Texas Rangers including yesterday 12 to 3 was the final for the second straight start rookie right-hander Bryce Miller they shelled him he gave up seven runs on eight hits and just two and a thirds innings the Rangers put the game out of reach early they scored five runs in the third and five runs in the sixth here's the one one and that ball over the middle of the plate and that thing is pounded high in the air deep out to center Go! Seeger's sixth home run of the year. And he continues an amazing tear since coming back off the I.L. Oh, this ball hit hard out to center field. That one chasing Rodriguez back. Bounces back over his head. They're going to test Lowe's speed. He's waved around and he'll score without a throw. In Mitch Garver's case, yeah, I can see the Tampa fight. Well, this is going to help things. He sends it to the alley in right field. It gets down for extra bases. One run is in. They will stop Young at third base. RBI double 
for Mitch Garver. Second and third, one out, and this one in the air. Left field, Kelnick angling back. That ball carrying well. It's off the top of the fence and crosses everybody up. Young and Garver score. A stand-up double for Grossman, and the Rangers have kicked the extra point. It's 7-0. He got robbed his last time up on a line drive. Not this time. That one heading into the corner. That'll get Jankowski home. Seager goes to second, and indeed the Rangers do get more. It's 8 nothing. The Rangers have gained half a game on hmm. since then. They've added to the lead. This one lined to center. Base hit by Young, and it's 9 to nothing. And Heim hits a towering blast down the right field line, and it is gone! Off the foul pole and right, a three-run shot. And the Rangers have posted a dozen runs. Oh, one to Gino. That's driven to left field and, and not played out there by Grossman. Coming around to scores, Ty France, Mariners on the board, RBI double Gino. Eugenio Suarez with RBI number 35. That's his seventh double of the season. The big games have come recently against the Mariners. Cabby hits it hard past the diving young into left field for base hit. Picks up a run. Gino touches home and the Mariners have another one on the board. Work to do four under 500. Diamondbacks, wow. Big surprise as Wong greets Brock Burke with a base hit left field. That'll score Hernandez. And the Mariners pecking away here. It has not gone well for them. This one lined to shortstop. Caught by Smith. He'll go to second. Who gets it? Okay, go ahead. Double play. <laughs> and the ball game is over. That's it. 12-3 Rangers win. And another historic victory for Bruce Bochy. 2041 as he moves all alone into 10th place all time. That was yesterday. Friday they lost 2 to nothing, and they got shelled on Saturday. 16 to 6, manager Scott Service says we need to regroup. They have the day off today before they take on San Diego. Hard to sugarcoat anything here. Obviously, um, you know, we're playing against a really hot team, good offensive club, and, and they roughed us up, you know, yesterday and today. Again, you know, our young, young starters struggled to get into the game. Um, and, you know, you have to give them credit. They're swinging the bat really well. And, um, you know, they beat us. They flat out beat us. That's just the, the name of the game, I think. You know, nothing we can do about it now other than, you know, we've, we've got to wash it away. We've got to get over to San Diego and start playing better baseball. That's it. You know, I often talk about, you know, it starts with the starting pitcher. It's been a challenge for us the last couple of days. They have come out all over us, and uh, they took control of the game. So um, it's where we're at. Baseball's really hard some days, and we felt that the last couple of days. Teoscar Hernandez, he went two for three with a triple. Ty France went two for four. He scored a run. The Mariners... Uh, Headed to San Diego. In fact, they're there as we speak. A two-game series with the Padres begins tomorrow night at 6.40 on Ruth Sports Northwest. While Seattle was slipping further back in the American League West, they're now in fourth place. Oakland continue to languish in last. Miami completes the three-game sweep of the eighth Sunday with a 7-5 victory. The Marlins breaking open a five-all tie in the bottom of the eighth on a booted base hit and a passed ball and a strikeout. Well, Oakland is now just 12-49 and on the season. Shohei Otani's RBI double in the top of the eighth gave the Angels a 2-1 win in Houston. The win salvaged the final game of the three-game set in L.A. after the Astros won the first two on Friday and Saturday. Texas is now three and a half games ahead of Houston in the American League West. The Angels move ahead of the Mariners eight and a half games back. The Mariners are now nine and a half games behind the Rangers. The Apple Sox started off their West Coast League baseball season with a bang and bend over the weekend. Completed a three-game sweep Sunday with a 12-1 win. Garrett Gores and Easton Evanson each collected three hits for Wenatchee. Cam Hoyland pitching six innings to get the win on the mound. The voice of the Apple Sox, Joel Norman with the wrap-up. The Wenatchee Apple Sox opened up the 2023 season with a series sweep on the road as they defeated the Bend Elks this past weekend at Vince Gannis Stadium. It all started with a 6-4 victory on Friday before a 4-3 triumph on Saturday and then a resounding 12-1 victory in the series finale on Sunday. Wenatchee scored eight runs in the seventh inning. Garrett Gores drove in three runs, and Cam Hoyland led the way on the mound. Six innings and just a one run allowed in the first. At one point, he retired 13 consecutive hitters. The Apple Sox return home on Tuesday night. They will host the Springfield Drifters at 6.35 p.m. 
in the home opener. You can get your tickets now for as affordable as $5 at applesocks.com or at the gate at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. With your Apple Sox update, I'm Joel Norman. Thank you, Joel. And uh, Joel, by the way, sent us this video of the first home run of the season for the Apple Sox. In that fourth inning, Gores puts a charge into this ball, launches out to left field, and here we go, the first home run of the season for the Apple Sox. Garrett Gores, first pitch swinging, launches this one over the left field fence. We wondered who it might be. No home runs through the first two days of the season. Would we get one in game number three? The answer is yes, as Garrett Gores hits his first in an Apple Sox uniform. Absolute no doubter off his bat. A solo shot to open up the fifth inning. Apple Sox scored 22 runs over the weekend. They're now 3-0 on the season. Now is back home. They return to home tomorrow for their home opener at Paul Thomas Cedar Stadium. We'll have that game live right here on the NCAA Live channel. We'll jump on the air right after the evening news at 6.30, the first pitch at 6.35. All right, to the West Coast League. Let's see, on yesterday, Cole Williams' RBI base hit in the bottom of the ninth gave Bellingham a 3-2 walk-off win over Edmonton. They also swept the River Hawks in the process. Nanaimo said Walla Walla off to an 0-3 start with Sunday's 7-3 win. Brandon Hoopay led the way for the Night Owls, collected three hits, including a two-run home run in the bottom of the first. Springfield comes to Wenatchee after sweeping Port Angeles over the weekend. The Drifters completed the sweep with yesterday's 8-2 victory, and Corvallis completes a three-game sweep of Ridgefield Sunday with a 6-2 win over the Raptors. J.C. Ng's RBI base hit broke open a 2-2 tie in the top of the eighth for the Knights, and then Corvallis added three more insurance runs in addition to that. Elsewhere, Spencer Shipman's two-run home run led Yakima Valley to a 6-2 win in Cowlitz. The Pippins taking two of three from the Black Bears in the weekend series. Kevin Shea's walk-off two-run base hit into the bottom of the ninth gave Victoria a walk-off victory over Kamloops, and they sweep the three-game series for the North Paws. And Portland won their rubber match of their three-game series with Kelowna Sunday 10-3. All right, packed house Saturday night at Wenatchee Valley's Super Oval. The Wenatchee 200, Lake Oswego, Oregon's Cole Raz took the checkered flag. He won the 200 lap main event in the super late models. The win also gave the driver of the number 63 car a check for a lot of money. Derek Thorne of Lakeport, California took second. Natchez's Taylor Riddle took third. It was a 1-2 Tumwater finish in the Inex Legends main event. Parker Stevens took first place. Fellow Tumwaterite Brandon Cole was second. Auburn's uh, Dylan Wolf taking third. Sela's Garrett Huffines took the main event in the Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning Thunder Cars. Moses Lake's Ron Stewart second. Tacoma's Elijah Pennington finished third. And they turn right around. Another race this weekend. It's bumped to pass night. It's presented by uh, Artisan Flooring, Rockstar Energy B Mods, the Plum Perfect Roadrunners, the Zero Handicap Youth Roadrunners, and the Johnson Electric Bump to Pass. WVSO.com. Get your tickets in advance. That place was packed on Saturday night. And those were just some of the games that people are playing at 27 minutes after the hour for the obscure holiday. I got nothing, nothing. I did my show prep on Friday. I looked around to all the sites and nothing. So make up your own obscure holiday. We'll jump right to today in history. Sorry, there just wasn't anything that interested me. Well, we were in World War I, we committed. Now we need warm bodies to fight it. So today conscription began. In the United States, it's known as Army Registration Day, June 5th, 1917, 106 years ago today. At the time, it was all able-bodied men ages 21 to 30 were required to register for the draft. Not all of them were drafted. A year later, they expanded it to any able-bodied men 18 to 45. They didn't draft a lot of 45-year-olds. Uh, by the end of World War II, 2 million men volunteered and about 2.8 million were drafted out of the five million or so that we sent over there. Time to sign up for the Army if you're between the ages of 21 and 30 on this date in 1917. Woodrow Wilson wanted an all-volunteer Army. His general said, that ain't gonna work. We'll need more than that. 55 years ago today, June 5th, 1968, shortly after winning the California primary and becoming the front runner for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States, Robert Francis Kennedy is shot in the kitchen of the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles by Sirhan Sirhan. He would die 25 hours later. CBS, NBC, and ABC all covered his victory speech 
NBC and CBS went off the air to local programming, but ABC stayed on the air with Frank Reynolds, and here's how it looked on television on this date in 1968. Senator Robert F. Kennedy, who won the California primary last night, had just completed making his victory speech in the ballroom of the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. He then started to move out to, uh, to return to his suite when he was shot. And the crowd begins to break up. The cheers, of course, start. You'll be able to hear that first shot in just a moment. See, very few people had any understanding of what it meant. Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. Hey, I want to hear really loud. Who's gonna... There it is. That was the first shot. The crowd continues to move away. Heading for the doors there, the ballroom. As the first screams, somebody has realized what has taken place. Listen for the other shots. Watch this, this young girl put her hand to her face. Kennedy was hit three times. Two of the wounds were not fatal, but the one that killed him was point blank behind his right ear. Five other people, by the way, were injured. Again, he would die in a Los Angeles hospital 25 hours later. June 5th, 1976, 47 years ago today, they had a lot of uh, flooding in eastern Idaho on the Teton River. The Bureau of Reclamation in 1971 said we can control the flooding if we build an earthen dam. And so they build an earthen dam, not a hydroelectric, just an earthen dam to control the flooding, which was a persistent problem. And then they started filling up the reservoir behind the dam. And as they were filling it for the first time on this date in 1976, well, here's a film of what exactly happened. As I sit here and watch, I mean, you see it caving. It's just coming apart. At 11.57 a.m. on June 5, 1976, the Teton Dam collapsed, flooding homes, farms, and the upper Snake River Valley with 80 billion gallons of water. Immortal, holy, great, what can I say? People down the stream better get out. People down the stream better get out. An end report from an aircraft in the vicinity of Sugar City. The wall of water is approximately five to six miles wide and is moving buildings and everything out of its way. There are cattle in the front that don't have a chance and uh, suggest that all the people that are anywhere near the river at all that get out of the way. Though the warnings came late and it was difficult to convince many people the dam indeed had burst, the timing of the flood in the middle of the day prevented mass deaths and most residents were evacuated to higher ground where they watched the eerie occurrence of houses and belongings floating away. Some 220,000 acre feet of water roared through the huge gouge of the Teton Dam that unforgettable Saturday morning. The water spread its destruction as fast as a mile a minute in the areas of Wilford and Sugar City. As it cut a swath of destruction seven miles wide, the water's level reached from eight to 10 feet in height. The results, over a billion dollars worth of damage. Destruction to 4,000 homes, wiping out 250 businesses, and 3,500 farm buildings, 11 human deaths, the killing of 13,000 head of livestock, and stripping topsoil from 100,000 acres of rich farmland. Cost the Bureau of Reclamation uh, $100 million to build the dam that never did work. Uh, government had to pay out an additional $300 million to the people affected, and again, 11 people died. It could have been a lot worse if this happened in the middle of the night with very little warning. It could have been a lot worse. And can you believe that? 15,000 cattle. Heads of cattle died when the Teton Dam collapsed on this date 47 years ago today. 
Something's not right in Los Angeles, June 5th, 1981. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports in their weekly newsletter that five people in the Los Angeles area have a strange case of pneumonia and they have a weakened immune system and we don't know what it is or what's causing it. It was the first recognized case of AIDS on this date in 1981. They don't know what's going on. And finally, 34 years ago, I remember this, Tank Man. Tank Man. During the student protests in Tiananmen Square, the Chinese government said enough of this nonsense. It's been going off about a month. It's time to put it down. Tank Man halts the process of a column of advancing tanks. He stood in front of the tanks for over a half an hour during the Tiananmen Square protests of 1989. Nobody knows who he is. Well, the Chinese government probably knows who he is. The fight, fate of the man, the identity of the man, nobody really knows, or if somebody knows, they're not saying anything. Also, they don't even know what happened to the crew of the tanks behind that. At least one witness said that Tank Man was not the only person to stand in front of the tanks during the protest, but Tank Man, as he became to be known, is unique because he was the only one that was actually photographed and video was taken. Nobody knows who he is. Well, if they know, they're not saying anything. By the way, you will not see that video in China. As far as China is concerned, the events of the summer of 1989 never happened. 35 minutes after the hour, birthdays. Kenneth Bruce Gorlick. Kenny G. An acquired taste, to say the least. He's 67 years old today. His 1992 album, Breathless, which I sold by the bucket load at my record store, is still the biggest selling instrumental album of all time. It sold 15 million copies. That's 14,999,000 too many. Don't much care for Kenny G's music, sorry. But he is a scratch golfer, and he also doesn't have to do anything anymore because he's one of the very first capital investors in Starbucks. So he's doing just fine. Kenny G is 67 years old today, and Mark Wahlberg is 52 years old today. I understand he's working again. 36 minutes after the hour, an opinion from Mike Mad Dog At the start of the show, I didn't even tell you what the interview segment was. It is. It's part two of my conversation with Dr. Lance Job. He runs the ER department at the Confluence Health Central campus. And Dr. Job, uh, on Friday, we talked about uh, uh, we talked about CPR. Now we're going to talk about AEDs and other cool stuff about your ticker. We want it to keep running. But if something goes wrong, Dr. Job's going to give you the info you need. That's coming up. You're watching Wake Up in Angie Valley on the NCW Live channel. Did you know people 65 or older make up 12% of the U.S. population but consume 34% of all prescription drugs? Protect yourself and your aged loved ones from prescription errors. Always read labels carefully to avoid mistakes. Ask your pharmacist if over-the-counter medicines conflict with your prescriptions and never skip doses or take more than is prescribed. This message sponsored by Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington. Call 1-800-572-4459 for prescription assistance. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. we got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. You'll find it at Save Full service at a low, low price. Hey, this
this is Mike, Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, a young couple I know got married. The husband didn't like carrots, and he jokingly told his new bride that he was allergic to carrots. Well, his new wife thought this was ridiculous, and she made her hubby some carrot cake, not telling him what was in it until after he ate it, and he failed to die from anaphylactic shock or any allergic reaction. Well, so then rather smugly she said, I knew you weren't allergic to carrots. Well, my question is this. Why did this gal need to prove her hubby wrong? What, what would have been the matter of just accepting that he didn't like carrots and that she didn't need to prove he wasn't allergic to them? You hear what I'm saying? Now, sometimes husbands and wives just need to recognize some statements as humorous or ironic and not feel the need to prove the other wrong. Uh, not that Rosie would ever do anything like that with me. <laughs> uh, this is Mike, Mad Doug Magnati, and that's my opinion. Continuing our two-part conversation with the good doctor, uh, Dr. Job from uh, Confluence Health. He's also the head of the, he, he does all kinds of important stuff. This, you don't want to hang around with this guy too much in a professional standpoint, because if you are, that means you, you need his help and you don't really want his help. <laughs> Last time we visited, we talked about um, heart attacks and, and CPR. Now we're talking about AED machines, and I'm starting to see these all over the place, especially the last couple of years, two, three years. There are a couple of significant celebrities and I'm going to mention the name Michael Jackson who had a cardiac arrest and that means if you don't this is much more serious than a heart attack and just one more time for folks who may have missed yesterday's edition uh, a cardiac arrest is your heart ain't beating no more right yeah there's uh, no forward flow um, person loses consciousness quickly and the chance of survival drops by about 10 percent per minute so you know we're really up against time and you know our goal is to get CPR started and um, and try to get an AED there as quickly as possible um, you know because literally what we're trying to do is you know snatch life from the jaws of death and we don't have a lot of time we talked about in the last episode the the differences between the symptoms the symptoms of a heart attack which everybody should know are there symptoms to cardiac arrest or you just you go down the person just loses consciousness very quickly. Um, in fact, I'm sure many people have seen the videos of Damar Hamlin with the Buffalo Bills, yep. who took that hit and, you know, w you know, got back up and then just keeled over um, because you lose blood flow to the brain, and so the brain is very intolerant of that, and it just, you know, things the lights go out and you start losing brain tissue immediately. So. AEDs are becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, we have one in the office that kind of showed up one day. Whenever there's a, a, any kind of building where there's a large group of people who could possibly be gathering, I've seen them at the gymnasiums, I've seen them at football stadiums, I see them at the Town Toyota Center. Any place where there's a large gathering of people, you see an AED machine there. What, what, is, what does it do? What exactly is it doing? So, you know, there's some different types of cardiac arrest, and we don't need to get into all the details of it, but about a third of them, maybe a little less, um, there's this kind of electrical storm in the heart. And what we're trying to do with that AED, with a jolt of electricity, is wipe the slate clean, stop that kind of electrical chaos, and allow the heart to just start beating normally again. So we're shooting a jolt of electricity through there and, um, and just, you know, trying to start over again. And so the AED will automatically analyze what the rhythm is and sense whether this is something we need to shock or whether it's a rhythm that there's no shock necessary for um, and then just continue CPR. Um, as opposed to the old days where, and we still have these, the paramedics use a manual defibrillator. Those are the two paddles that you see? On well, they still use the patches. Okay. We, oh, we yeah. don't use the paddles anymore. Okay. They're kind of fun, but <laughs> um, <laughs> just the patches. And, um, and they will look on the monitor and determine, is this a, a rhythm that needs to be shocked? And so they can very quickly look at the rhythm, determine the shock needs to be delivered, and hopefully within two seconds, we can deliver that shock. Whereas the AED needs a little more time to analyze, and so there usually is about an eight to 10, 12 second delay between having to stop CPR, analyze, charge, and deliver that shock. So obviously, time is not a friend. We don't want to stop CPR, so the more time you have to stop, the worse it is. But the AEDs are getting better. They're, they're shortening up that time interval to shock delivered. 
Uh, family members on the ground, persons on the ground, they're obviously having a cardiac arrest. There's an AED machine. What are you doing from there? Does it does it tell, talk you through it? Yes. I mean, they don't come in this. You don't have time to look at an instruction manual. Right. Doc. No, there's no time. So, uh, simply turn it on, and uh, and it will walk you through. Um, you Get know, out exactly town. what you need to do. It so will. it will tell you. You know, put the patches on, and it has diagram of where to put the patches. Um, it, it will help you with CPR, make sure you've called 911. So it just kind of reminds you of all those things that you need to do. And it's not a lot, but in that stressful moment, it's hard to think clearly of what you need to do. And so it walks you through it. These things have saved lives. It is, there's, it is, it's not, it's a, quant it's a fact. They have saved absolutely. lives. Absolutely, absolutely. And you, you know yeah. that as yeah. a fact. Absolutely. So Yeah, we, we had a case recently um, at, a, at a public venue here in Chelan County just a few weeks ago um, where a person dropped and bystanders started CPR. There was an AED close by. They got the AED, provided a shock before EMS crews even got there uh, and saved his life. Um, so it definitely is, is uh, something that saves lives. Obviously, the AED technology has improved to the point where any layman can operate one now, which was really not the case not that long ago, right? Right. Right, it, because it can walk you, through, it, it walks you through, but then the technology is able to determine what that rhythm is, and it doesn't need a person to determine that rhythm. You don't need that training anymore to do that. Personal AEDs are becoming more and more prevalent. They're a little on the pricey side. The price is coming down. If it's uh, something affordable and you have a household of a, of a bunch of people, should you have one handy? Yeah, I think eventually we're going to get there. You know, as you mentioned, you looked up the Philips uh, Heart Start was a couple of grand. That's, you know, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but I think the price will come down. The Philips is the first AED that um, is FDA approved, does not require a prescription. Um, but I think that's going to become more common. And I know there's an AED that's coming down the pike that's uh, um, supposed to be about nine hundred dollars um, so the price is going to come down I think they're going to become more common um, and you know I think the technology is is really going to continue to improve and save more lives we mentioned in our last episode that all the Rivercom dispatchers and they're all good every one of them trust me on that I know a great deal of them they are well versed in how to walk you through CPR if that is the indication but they also are well versed on how to walk you through an AED if for whatever reason you just can't figure it out Right. <clears throat> yeah, they can help out. They can Absolutely. Help out. Uh, yeah. Would you like to see AEDs almost everywhere you go? <laughs> I mean, you know, ideally, you know, we would be able to have AEDs, you know, within, you know, quick, you know, run someplace if we needed to have them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, the, you know, another thing to remember is if you see an AED, just think about, oh, there's an AED there. Um, you never know when you might need one. The one at our office has an alarm on it. It's in a glass box. You can see it. But if you open the door, an alarm goes off, and it, you know you've opened the door, and the alarm goes off because you can't miss it. And that alerts everybody, hey, somebody opened the door. So don't open one up as a joke because you'll get in trouble, not like <laughs> I did. It was early in the morning. Uh, one more question, Doc, Doc, and we'll cut you loose. We talked about this before we roll tape. This, this thing fascinates me. Downloading an app that will alert your phone that somebody is in distress and needs help with an AED within a certain geographical area of where you're at. This fascinates me. This could mm -hmm. save lives. Right, right. And and this is actually, you know, something that's happening now. We don't have it here in Chelan County. I hope that we can get it. Um, but there's a couple of apps. One of them is called Pulse Point. Um, and essentially, the the dispatch center um, has the has control of this. And people can opt into the system so that they get notified if somebody is having a possible cardiac arrest within a certain defined geographic location, say a quarter mile from them, everybody gets notified and they can respond um, and help you know, do CPR. Those that respond would know how to do CPR. Um, and then even further down the road, and this isn't active yet, but it's in development, would be an AED that will, you know, dispatch would be able to, again, the same idea, notify anybody within, say, a quarter mile so that person has an AED and their neighbor five doors down is having a cardiac arrest, their AED will tell them where it is, what the address is, where to go. They can grab that AED, run five houses down, provide a shock before fire department ever even gets there. And there's probably something else that they can do if they haven't done it already. I'm sure they've thought of it. You could probably do it on the app that I am 
trained and certified in, in cardiac pulmonary, I miss, but CPR. I can right. do CPR. Maybe that would show up too. Hey, there's a guy yeah. who lives right down the street who knows CPR and understands right. how and to do it. And the people that would opt into this um, would be verified as CPR trained. Right, right. Um, and they're already doing this in Spokane County. Yes. So, yeah. Doc, I know your specialty is, uh, is emergency, but I got one quick question before I cut you loose. After I eat asparagus and I go pee, there's a certain odor. Is there anything I need to worry about, or is that, <laughs> is that normal? Is no, that, no, I, it's, that's normal. I should, okay, yeah. I don't need to consult my physician. Yeah. On no, that. you're you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule. Here's hoping you have a really boring day at the office today. All right. Thank you. I want to see you sitting at your computer playing solitaire. You're watching right. Wake Thanks. Up in Angie Valley. We'll be right back. Merry Mates can clean your entire home, business, or vacation rental from top to bottom, inside and out. Merry Mates will even take care of cleaning your carpets and they can pressure wash your home. Merry Mates has thousands of happy customers. They've been cleaning homes and businesses in our valley for over 25 years. Check out their glowing reviews at MerryMaidsOfWenatchee.com and call the cleaning experts, Merry Mates, to get your free estimate. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. So relax, it's done. Over 68% of all cardiac arrests in the United States occur in the home. How can you be prepared when a crisis happens? Watch this video to find out. PenCare presents the Philips Heart Start Home AED, an automated external defibrillator designed for home operation by an untrained or minimally trained user and available without a prescription. If someone is suffering from sudden cardiac arrest, they will not be breathing normally and will not respond when touched or shaken. If there is more than one bystander available, have someone call emergency services while you set up the Heart Start Home AED. If nobody else is available, call emergency services. Then get the Heart Start Home AED. Unzip the storage case and lay it flat. Activate the Philips Heart Start Home AED by pulling on the green handle and set the cover aside. Voice prompts will begin to guide you through the defibrillation process. Users are then directed to remove all clothing from the victim's chest. Pull the tab at the top of the smart pad's cartridge to remove the seal and remove the two pads from the cartridge. The liner from the pad must be removed, exposing the adhesive surface. Place the first pad on the victim's upper right chest and place the second pad on the victim's left side, wrapping around the ribs. Press the pads firmly into the skin so that they make good contact. Be sure to note any lumps or surgical scars on the victim's chest. These could be indicators of an implanted defibrillator or pacemaker. Avoid placing the pads over these areas. The Heart Start Home AED will start analyzing the victim's heart rhythm after the pads are attached. The device's caution light will begin flashing as it studies the victim's heart rhythm, and nobody should be touching the victim during this time. If a shock is required, the device will instruct you to press the flashing orange shock button. Before pressing the shock button, make sure nobody is touching the victim. After pressing the shock button, the device will confirm that a shock has been applied and that it is once again safe to touch the victim. The Heart Start Home AED will then analyze the heart rhythm once more and determine if CPR should be administered. If CPR instruction is needed, the user can press the flashing blue I button to receive coaching. If the Heart Start Home AED determines a shock is not needed, the device will alert the user that it's safe to touch the victim and begin CPR if necessary. If the victim is moving or has regained consciousness, then obey local safety protocols until emergency medical services arrive. For treatment of an infant or child victim, first begin CPR while an available person calls emergency services. If nobody else is available, perform CPR for one to two minutes before retrieving the Heart Start Home AED unless you witness the child's collapse. Remove all clothing from the child's torso because the pads will be placed on the child's chest and back. Place one pad on the center of the chest and the other pad in the center of the back. The Heart Start Home AED will automatically reduce the charge to an appropriate level for an infant or child victim. An infant child CPR coaching can be provided from the device if needed. 
When emergency medical personnel arrive, you should explain to them what happened as clearly as possible. Inform them that if they hold down the blue eye button, the device will report how long ago it was activated and how many shocks were delivered. After the victim's care has been transferred to emergency medical services, you can turn off the Hard Start Home AED by holding down the green on-off button for one second. There are certain situations where the Heart Start Home AED or any automated external defibrillator should never be used. If the victim is in water or excessively wet or sweaty, the device should not be used. It should never be operated around oxygen containers or other combustible materials. And you should never attempt to use the Heart Start Home AED on yourself. The Heart Start Home AED performs daily self-evaluations of all systems, including the battery, and also tests itself to confirm that the pads are installed properly. A blinking green ready light lets a potential user know that the unit is ready. After using the Heart Start Home AED, check the outside of the unit for damage or dirt. If necessary, clean it with a soft, damp cloth and soapy water. Ammonia-based cleaners can also be used, or a mixture of two tablespoons of chlorine bleach diluted in a quart of water. Never use rubbing alcohol, acetone-based, or enzymatic cleaners to clean the Heart Start Home AED. Do not submerge the unit in any liquids or allow liquids to spill onto it. Sterilizing the Heart Start Home AED or any of its components is not necessary. Philips Smart Pads are single-use only and need to be replaced after deployment. To install new pads, use the latch on the top of the unit and slide it aside. This will release the cartridge lock and allow the spent cartridge to be removed. Open a new Smart Pads cartridge and slide it into the cartridge recess. When the cartridge is properly placed, there will be an audible click. Ensure the green pull handle is all the way down. Then, record the replacement of the cartridge in the maintenance tag. The Heart Start Home AED stores data automatically for 30 days following its last use and holds information such as ECG recordings for 15 minutes after attachment of the smart pads, the device's status during the incident, the device's rhythm analysis decisions for the duration of the incident, and the elapsed time associated with all of these events. Removing the battery erases all of the data from the Heart Start Home AED's last use. You should always establish a schedule for performing periodic checks to the Heart Start Home AED. Don't store the device without a smart pads cartridge installed. First, make sure that the green ready light is blinking. Check any spare accessories for damage and replace any that have expired. Inspect the body of the unit for cracks or damage, and if damage is present, contact Philips Technical Support for assistance. You should record all maintenance checks in the included maintenance log. It is recommended to have a spare battery and spare smart pads with the Heart Start Home AED, and these can be purchased separately. Child infant smart pads are strongly encouraged if the unit will be used on a child victim. Philips Smart Analysis and CPR Coaching are there to guide you through the stress of a sudden cardiac situation, and Philips patented Quick Shock technology ensures that victims receive the highest peak current in the first shock. What's the best way to attract a wide variety of beautiful birds to your backyard? By offering the birds the right foods in expertly designed bird feeders from Wild Birds Unlimited. Whether you've been feeding the birds for a while or are just getting started, let our backyard bird feeding specialists show you how to add a little joy to your life and make nature a part of every day. Shop now for exclusive bird foods, feeders, hardware, and more. Wild Birds Unlimited, products designed by experts. Trusted local advice. You are ready to earn your BSN degree, and we know you need a special place to take the next step in your career. You are an engaged learner who needs modern labs and equipment, hands-on support, and small class sizes. You're a busy adventurer who needs trees, mountains, rivers, and trails. As a learner, as a future RN, as an adventurer, find it in the BSN program at Wenatchee Valley College. Another beautiful morning. What a great start to the week. Hope you had a great weekend. It was 85 on Saturday, 85 
yesterday. We'll be getting close to 90 today. Two things I want to be aware of before we throw the uh, forecast up for you. Number one, going to be a little breezy, especially this afternoon and tonight. Some of the winds are going to be channeling right down the Okanagan Valley and heading our direction. So don't be surprised if the wind picks up in intensity later on today before it dies down and then picks back up again. And the relative humidity is going to be bone dry. We can see it in the single digits. That is extremely dry air and we'll keep a close eye on that. But for the balance of the week, it's going to be hot until we get to Friday. From the National Weather Service, it looks something like this. Sunshine again, a little breezy. High about 89, 57 for the overnight low tonight. We'll be into the 90s, they tell us. On Tuesday, not quite as windy tomorrow as today, but still a little breeze. That actually won't be too bad. It'll cool us down a little bit. I have 91, 61 for the overnight low on Tuesday. We peak with the heat with 97 degrees on Thursday. And then by Thursday night, we'll start seeing some clouds roll in. By Friday, it will be cloudy. No sunshine on Friday. Maybe even a raindrop or two with a high of 80 and a little rain possible on Friday night. That's it for us. We will see you Tuesday. Bye-bye.